eight weeks out from the Olympia. We're here at the Muscle Factory, and today is my push session. So we're gonna do this a little different today. We're gonna jump into this session. And at the end of the video, I'll go over my physique updates. I have some cool comparisons to show you, and probably that'll be a good takeaway for how you should be tracking and looking at your progress through prep. And I'll go over all my diet, cardio, and all those, any changes taking place, but let's jump into the workout. So this is uh, push day A for me today, and all my push sessions are structured the same. It's a lateral fly, a flat press, then an incline press. I did have it rotating an incline press to a flat press initially, but I get so much more out of my flat pressing for chest development that I structured it this way. The start of this session will just be a machine lateral, which this is my heavier work day. So my machine lateral and my fly start in lower rep ranges. So I'll do a prime machine lateral on today and my second push day. On leg day, I do the lateral, but I work in the 20 rep range. So today's session will be eight to 12 reps. Still set this one up on a cam setting five, so it loads more lengthen, which you get so much more out of your side delt work if you can load lengthen. However, on my leg day, I do keep it loaded on a cam setting um, four, so it loads more short. Just I have one day that's high rep, load short, and I can get a really good mind-muscle connection with that side lateral, and then it seems to carry over into my other days really well. So doing four sets here, and staying in that eight to 12 rep range. Movement of the day, do a prime pec fly. Same, same movement I have on my other push day. Cam setting is on a one, so I load kind of mid-range. I don't like starting loaded lengthen on this one because of uh, potential for pec injuries, but it gives me just a good ability to have good stimulus, uh, manage the injury profile, and get a good connection with chest before I move on to my compound work. So this is my heavier day, so staying on eight to 12 reps on this one, doing three sets here. Then we'll jump over to my pressing movements. Right. Smith Machine is next. This one, I started doing it at Anytime Fitness, and I'm, I'm back here at the Muscle Factory pretty much every day of the week. Just need the environment. I need like, we have so many competitors here. I mean, you can see the sign behind me right here. That's a list of like all the all the pros that have come out of here, which I think, gosh, we have, I think 30 to 40 here. So anyway, um, back here, so kept this Smith machine in place, but I, I, I get the best pec work out of it for low mid pec with, a, with a, a flat bench, whether it's a dumbbell or a Smith machine. I dig pretty hard my traps on the bench with a lot of foot drive, so this kind of changes it my my rib cage alignment to be more of a decline press which for me that's where i get a lot of good like lower and mid pec work so moving to like a slight incline is all i need for like upper pec work so we'll get into that movement next but um that's how i set this one up like now if i had like a my, my nautilus press day i don't have all that foot drive and, and digging into my traps so I actually push my hips out a little bit to make it more of that decline angle, which is good alignment for my position. Do uh, three sets here and stay in that eight to 12 rep range. A huge cue here for me though is trying to squeeze the hands together, like I'm trying to push the bar together and that just keeps my pecs engaged the entire time. And I, I've decreased my load because it's so much more output out of my pec that normally I just it, bring a lot of tricep in the movement. I can power through and lift more load. But man, the, the pec stimulus is just lower. So doing three sets here. Moving on to my incline press. We got a new prime incline flat press in that I just had to use. So I was doing a hammer strength press, which isn't the best one for me. I feel a lot of tricep in it, no matter how I cue it or anything, angle. But this incline, this flat press, It'll, uh, the bench will incline to about a 15 degree and it converges perfectly. And at that 15 degree angle, like my upper arm path aligns perfectly with like those sternal costal area. So I loved it, it's awesome. And I love a prime machine as a secondary press because you'll have some tricep fatigue kick in on your first press movement. So if I can load a movement to where it drops off in that shortened position when the triceps are having a hard time finishing, that's ideal, I can get a lot of stimulus per rep, I can keep those reps going and extend the set. When normally I hit a failure point and 
triceps is the, the first thing fatigue. So what I do, you'll see me load it, this be like two plates on that top peg, so I load heavy off the bottom at a lengthened position, and only one plate in that middle peg. And that'll be the first set. Then after on the second set, to stay within the rep range and be able to keep outputting, I'll move to a 25 pound plate mid, mid, peg, mid peg, keep the same up top. So then I now can keep the set going any farther. So just two sets here, staying in this eight to 12 rep range. All right, so moving into isolation work, well, one of them is a single arm cross body tricep extension. So my other push day, I, I do a, just a normal cable push down. Also overhead, I can't do all overhead though. It'll end up beating up my elbow too much. So this cross body path, it lengthens up the tricep some, but it works within my ability to externally rotate. So it's very elbow friendly for me. So just through three sets here for this extension. And once I get to my isolation work, I start going back and forth, um, doing compound sets with calf work. So I'll do a toe press today and I rotate the calf work with doing high and low reps. So one day will be like uh, 8 to 12 reps. My other day will be 12 to 15 reps. So just rotating the rep range. But I love a, love a toe press because there's no axial loading and you can just stay braced and just focus on calf work. It's like a donkey calf race basically. Um, do four sets of calves and I'll just go back and forth with this cross body tricep extension three sets there. The last movement of the day, moving on to dips. So not what you might not think would be an ideal movement for the end of the day, because it's kind of has a lot of bracing, but I'm so fatigued everywhere that I can do it just body weight. It's very easy to control my body weight. So I, I use this as uh, more of a tricep movement. I, I stay in a very upright position and it, I get a huge stretch on the tricep as well but it's also very elbow friendly. So just control this, I pause in the bottom, get a, a really um, good control out of that bottom lengthen position, and then press up, basically trying to think about pushing my elbows through underneath my shoulder. And uh, you'll see on these, they're just like extremely controlled, like up and down, but by, at this point, body weight's plenty. So uh, load, loading's not much needed with like a weight belt or anything. And that, uh, Finishes off my session. I'll, and I'm gonna do abs on my pull session. Uh, I'll do them on today. It just depends how long the session's going and kind of where I'm at time-wise. So that'll wrap up the session. We'll head home, get a meal in, and we'll go over all the fun check-in visual updates that I told you about earlier. Back home from the gym. This is actually not my post-workout meal. This is meal four for the day. So eat my cream of rice on the way home. And this will be the meal I have about two hours later, which Renee got us some new, it's not a plate, it's not a bowl. It's actually a pasta dish on Amazon. It's like about a nine inch diameter, but man, these things are awesome. I love them. Uh, they're great in the microwave to keep your food hot. And it has a lip, so they're flat, right? I hate round plates because their food will like slide in the middle. You have nothing to like push up against to get the food out like a bowl. But then a bowl, you have like, you know, limitations with that of having your food spread out and like an even spread of like salt or whatever you're putting on. So this is my favorite eating dish now. However, this is like, this is prep food. So off season, I basically will need a casserole dish or something. <laughs> but anyway, these were, these were cool to get just off Amazon. <laughs> So the plan, so check this out. Uh, currently at 2.37 in the morning, fasted. Look really tight in all the shots. Um, definitely have added some, some size already. And what I like to do during this phase, this long piece, and what you can do if you're running like a multiple show with a big gap, is compare back to your previous prep picks. And so for one, you can see a comparison here of my uh, rear shot. And what I do is I look back through prep and find when I would have similar condition close to it and then compare those picks. And so this is between Toronto when I was three weeks out. And why I use Toronto is because I was still actively dieting down. In Vancouver, I was already lean, so I can't really count that. But 
Toronto, this was three weeks out versus current. So right now I know off this, I'm like three to four weeks out within striking distance. I wouldn't just say like, oh, wait till I'm three weeks out because I do wanna make sure I have that week of transition of moving from higher food to lower food and make sure I have my rate set up of what I need to get down. And then also it's the Olympia. So I want, I want another buffer week just to be sure. Um, and more time being ready is absolutely fine. So, and I, and I could have been a little leaner in Toronto. So I have all those things factored in and what you should be thinking about when looking back on these tip, t uh, picks and, and kind of prepare your timeline. So what I would say here is like, all right, this would be like five weeks to pull down, but I'm currently eight weeks. So I have some time here. I probably have another, I would say for sure, maybe two weeks in this phase before I need to start making these adjustments. Now, another cool thing is to look back at progress. And here's like my side chest, which is a cool comparison. And this is at 235, uh, three weeks out from Toronto and current being 237. And you, you can vastly see like the thickness everywhere that's been added, um, especially in my side leg. And that's been a focus on my quad, but you can really see even the detail in my quad is, is improved just because I, it has that much more size to it. Um, of course, the upper body as well. So it's a great, like if you're looking to look at progress of muscular wise is over months, compare back at similar body fats, and then you can look through your program and see if your training is lining up to improve the body parts that you need it to. So I hope that helps like as far as gauging progress and when uh, for your hypertrophy program, but also trying to, trying to have uh, points of like assessing body fat of when you can push up and need to pull back for this situation when you're in multiple shows. My current plan though, um, currently the diet hasn't changed this past week. So still six days a week of training, my train day diet, and I have it pulled up here. I track everything on chronometer, which is a great app to use. Um, it scans barcodes well, and so I, I, tr I track everything. Um, but at uh, train days, it's 540 grams of, of carbs, uh, 320 grams of protein, and 50 grams of fat. And that's counting everything, right? So trace, protein, um, all of it. So, uh, I, you know, I don't think you need a lot of protein. Like this meal is 120 grams of ch cooked chicken, and then I have uh, 60 grams of yogurt. This is like the main direct protein sources. And then with the trace amounts, it all adds up to like 50 grams of protein for this meal. But some people say this is high. But again, if you look at my actual meat sources, like it's not a lot of protein. It keeps my digestion really good that way and, and hunger signaling up. But um, anyway, I run that six days a week. Then on my off day diet, all that all drops down is my carbs to like 275 grams. But uh, I, I would tell you like, for whatever you're doing, just track as accurately as you need to for your goal. So with right now where I'm at in prep and, and knowing I'm going to be moving into a peak at some point soon, it's easy for me to very track more detailed right now than what you might do in the off season or if you're not even competing. So like with this meal, like I'll track all the condiments and note them in chronometer, um, the salt amounts that I use. So when I move, move into a, like a stricter phase of pulling down and then into peak week, it's already accounted for and I know where I'm at. Like I know that I'm at nine and a half grams of sodium and four and a half grams of potassium for my whole day. Condiments included, salt included, you know, everything. And it's easy for me to track. Like I'm putting stuff on the scale. So it's, it's so regimented that it's, it's not time consuming at all. But for many people deeper in the off season, like you need to track all, all that, that aspect, like fluctuation sodium, it's not as big of a deal. So, so just track as accurately as you need to for your, your goal. And uh, some people go excessively to where you're now tracking beyond the accuracy needed for your goal. This is when I think when you're getting down to like with your drug scale measuring lines of salt out and you're like, okay, that's you know 1.23 grams of salt. Like that's going too far in accuracy that d doesn't add up to a marginal difference in outcome. So anyway, um, just doing steps, 10,000 steps per day and no direct cardio. And just being in this prep, in this phase, if this was off season, I would be start building in cardio and moving to off season, but knowing to manage fatigue, training volume higher, and knowing I'm gonna be pulling back down soon, I'm held off on the cardio piece uh, because cardio right now is just a means to burn calories. And I, I have to just also keep in mind, like 
it's not the best for what I would want more for the heart health piece, but being that I'm lean, being that calories are lower, body fat's lower, the health piece is well in check with my lab work. But off season, that is absolutely where I would be building in cardio from here. So it's not gonna come back in. I'll probably just raise steps and drop food to start pulling back down. Um, and that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts to my plan right now. Like daily morning vacuums are in place. Uh, haven't hit like multiple sessions of posing work yet, but that'll start coming in relatively soon. But recovery's been great. Sleep's like dialed in. I sleep about seven and a half to eight hours a night, waking once to go to the bathroom. So recovery's high, training's progression, body weight's moving up roughly about a pound per week and staying in a good condition spot. So hopefully all that rambling gave you some good valuable pieces for your own coaching, if you're self-coaching or coaching others. But anyway, everybody, thanks for tuning in and I will Talk to you seven weeks out.